St. Paul family and whoever else happens to be watching. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. This is episode 36 of this video series, The Call of Wisdom, our year-long study of the book of Proverbs. And we're getting close to the end. We'll be covering Proverbs chapter 27 today, 27 out of 31 total chapters. So yes, getting near the end. Now, if you missed uh, the last episode and want to catch up on it, you can find a link in the description down below, or uh, there's a link that will show up in the top corner of your screen as well. What can you expect to learn in this episode? Well, you will learn that you can learn a lot about someone by the way that they handle praise, the praise that they receive. Uh, you will discover the signs of true love and friendship. Everybody wants to find true love, right? Uh, finally, uh, do you know the condition of your flocks and herds? Don't have any? That's okay. You will still learn how to best steward and manage your resources. So all that and more coming right up. We're going to jump right in. And as always, if you'd like to follow along in your Bible, certainly recommend that you do so. We will be in Proverbs chapter 27, verses 1 through 27. I'm going to start off by uh, talking about uh, pride and conceit, looking at a few verses that have to do with that, starting with verse 1. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Do not boast about tomorrow. Nobody knows what is going to happen tomorrow. This is especially important in light of, of Jesus' own words that uh, he is going to return and it will be like a thief in the night. No one knows. Uh, it will catch everyone uh, off guard, as in, in, in the sense of you know the, the moment when it happens. And so we should not be like that rich fool that Jesus talks about in a parable who says, hey, you know, I've got uh, stored up all these goods for myself. I can sit back, relax, eat, drink, be merry. God says, you fool, this very night, your life will be taken from you. James, uh, in, in his book, his letter, uh, has some very similar words, uh, kind of further cementing James as kind of the, the New Testament book of wisdom, which makes sense because James is a lot about uh, pr practical living for believers, uh, just as Proverbs is. But this is from uh, verse uh, chapter 4 in James. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. Very similar to Proverbs 27. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. We don't put our trust in things in this life. But uh, James also gives some practical advice of what we should say about tomorrow. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord lives or, excuse me, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. If the Lord wills, um, we will do so and so. Ultimately, recognizing that though we may make plans, everything is in God's hands. Uh, moving on from there, uh, verse 2 and verse 21, you know, how do you handle receiving praise? First of all, verse 2 says, let another praise you, not your own mouth, a stranger, not your own lips. Very similar to boasting, don't, don't boast, don't uh, praise yourself, uh, rather uh, let that praise come from elsewhere. But then uh, when you do receive praise, uh, what, what should you do with it? Verse 21 says, the crucible is for silver, the furnace is for gold, and a man is tested by his praise. We often think of uh, suffering and, and discipline as ways that God tries and tests us in this life and, and refines us and molds and shapes us. But here, verse 21 tells us that, that praise can do the same thing. How do you respond to the praise that you receive? Does the praise go to your head? Uh, do you get do you get a big head and an, an inflated sense of ego? Do you seek to share your the glory and and the success with others uh, and and in turn praise them? Will you give glory to God? 
There's a story about Roman emperors when they would come into to Rome after uh, achieving a, a great conquest. And there would be these uh, uh, parades that they have and people just shouting their praises and throwing flowers at them. And uh, they would have a, a servant in the chariot with the general whispering in their ear, Memento Mori. What does that mean? Remember that you will die. In the midst of all the praise that they received, uh, at the same time, they were being, being reminded, you will die one day. It was a way to keep their ego in check uh, and can be a great reminder for us. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little morbid, uh, but just a reminder that uh, the, the praise that we should ultimately seek is from God. The praise that comes when we put our faith and our trust in his son, our savior, Jesus. Are you looking for true love? How about simply faithful friendship? That, that sounds okay, right? Uh, verses 5 and 6. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Open rebuke, someone who is willing to tell you uh, the hard things. This is a true friend, as we've seen in, in many of the other Proverbs uh, that we've taken a look at, that uh, a true friend is, is willing to speak honest truth, who is willing to rebuke you rebuke you, and, and correct you uh, so that you are a, a better person. Right? Rather than, than hidden love, somebody who may claim that they love you, but their love is inactive and it is unexpressed. Right? Uh, better is somebody who will be open and honest with you. Same, along the same lines, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Again, somebody who is willing to say hard things to risk uh, hurting, hurting your feelings, wounding your pride uh, for the sake of your own growth uh, in your faith, in your relationships, things like that. Uh, when you have a true friend, um, you can understand that they're not out to hurt you. They're there to to help you, to help you become a better person. That goes along with a very famous verse in this chapter, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. Uh, we have these relationships uh, so that uh, we can improve one another. Now, this, this works in both ways, and we have to be careful about what sort of friends that we choose, but a good friend uh, can help you to become a better person uh, and an and iron sharpening iron. Whereas profuse are the kisses of an enemy. An enemy seeks to, to flatter you and is really not out to help you, does not have your best intentions. Uh, what better example is there than Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus himself? How did he do it? Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Judas came up to kiss Jesus, only to identify him as the one that the, the guards should arrest. Uh, and so betrayed him in that way. Find good friends who will truly love you. Look to verse 14. Uh, Whoever blesses his neighbor with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, will be counted as cursing. Have you ever wanted to uh, curse your alarm clock when it goes off in the morning? I, I, I know I have. And that's where my mind went to. You know, you hear that alarm clock and you're like, ugh. Uh, you know, you just wish you would just shut up. You hit that snooze. You throw it across the room, whatever it is. Well, in this, uh, you know, even if, if somebody wants to say something nice to me, right? But if he knocks on my door or calls me at 5.30 on a Saturday morning, I, I'm not going to be very happy with him, no matter what nice things that he has to say. What this proverb is really getting at is it's just wisdom in, in timing, right? Uh, the, the, the time and the situation that even if you want to do a, a good thing, a nice thing, consider, consider the timing, Consider the situation that you are in so that uh, what, even if it's a, a blessing, does not come across as a curse. Let's take a quick look at verse 20. Sheol and Abaddon are never satisfied, and never satisfied are the eyes of man. Sheol and Abaddon, if you remember, are uh, places, the, the realm of the dead 
if you will. So think of the, the open grave and, and death is never satisfied, right? Death will just keep taking more and more from us. Comparing that to uh, the eyes of man and, and think of the, the desires of our hearts, really. Uh, the, the eyes are the window to the soul, if you will. And, and we recognize within our sinful flesh, uh, there, there is covetousness, there is sinful desire, uh, and, and that will never be satisfied. We'll always want more. Uh, and, and so we are called to be content with what God gives us, not give in to coveting. Because there's always a sense of, we, we say to ourselves, well, if I only had this, then I would finally be happy. No, you won't, right? We'll never be satisfied unless it is in God and in his love alone. Now pay attention to verses 23 through 27, and I want you to consider this. Are these verses uh, financial advice, or are they a parable for leadership? Uh, know well the condition of your flocks, and give attention to your herds. For riches do not last forever, and does a crown endure to all generations? When the grass is gone, and the new growth appears, and the vegetation of the mountains is gathered, the lambs will provide your clothing the goats the price of a field. There will be enough goat's milk for your food and the, for the food of your household and maintenance for your girls. Financial advice or a parable for leadership? Well, I think it could be interpreted either way, right? The, as far as financial advice, this is warning you about being kind of uh, smug and just assuming that your wealth will continue on and on uh, without you really having to pay attention to it or, or do anything about it. No, uh, know the condition of your flocks and herds, of the, the gifts that God has given you. Be a good uh, steward and manager of those resources so that you can continue to provide uh, for your family and, and all those who rely on you. Now, some have seen this also as, as kind of an introductory part to the next uh, section of Proverbs, which really addresses kings, and see it as a, a parable for leadership, especially with a sense of flocks and herds. Uh, kings in Israel were often referred to as shepherds, and so you can certainly see that in these in this passage as well, but it, it's really the same sort of message. As a leader, uh, know the condition of your people. Know them well. Uh, care for them. Uh, be a good manager, a good steward of those that God has placed in your care to serve as a leader. And uh, God will reward you with the fruits of your labor. But especially I want to, to think of the, the great shepherd, the good shepherd, if you will, Jesus Christ, who knows Every single one of his flock knows him so well he can tell when just one little sheep is missing. And he will go and he will find that sheep because he cares about every single one. And he will pick it up and carry it home rejoicing. And that's what he does for you and for me. For a time of reflection, I want you to consider this. Think of the last time that you received praise. How did you handle it? Did you recognize the temptation to pride and, and fight back against it? Or did you crave more of it? How can you handle praise better the next time? Think about that. And then please pray. Lord God, you are worthy of all our honor, glory, thanksgiving, and praise. Help me to be satisfied in you and your love alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching. Until next time, God's grace and peace be with you all.